Well hello everybody again and welcome back to another video. Um, on my last video I was only saying about um, how good the Volt bikes had been and that I hadn't had to do a lot of work on them. Well unfortunately this, this was um, self-inflicted if you like because only last week I'd got my oldest Volt Pulse bike out and I've got a very big Oxford chain that I locked the back wheel up with and um, somehow when I come to unlock it I got the chain caught and as you can see I've I broke one of the spokes just one now I'm <laughs> I'm not an expert bike wheel builder here but I don't like having a wobbling spoke wobbling about in the wheel um, so the plan is uh, to take the wheel off take the tar off and see if I can replace that spoke um, and at least get a, a good one back in there. Um, I'm not going to try and balance the wheel or um, do anything special with the wheel because, as like I said, I'm not a bike a wheel builder. Uh, but I thought this might be interesting. Um, several people have asked me um, with these battery bikes, how how, the, how are they to work on? How is it easy, is it, for instance, to take the back wheel off? So I thought I'd make a little video of me trying to do this and um, if it helps anybody else, well, so be it. That's, um, that's always um, a good thing. So anyway, I'll get, um, I'll get the panniers off and get the tripod and get the camera on the tripod and uh, then we'll start. Right, well, we start by um, just breaking There's a little cable tie there that holds the power lead in. So on these bikes there's conveniently a socket which just breaks, obviously like that, and that's it. That's the power off now, or the power disconnected to the wheel. So then, theoretically, we can start to, as you see I've got a very basic toolkit. I thought I'd keep it as basic as possible um, to show you you don't need a lot of tools. We've got a little adjustable here, which hopefully should... Get us the. I'll come around the other side. Get us the whip. Oh, I might have to get a bit of spanner on this. There we go. It's turning. So we'll just slacken the wheel with all the nut there. So, if we bring that cable up through there then, we can then remove the wheel nut, that will slide right through, there's the nut, and there's the holding back washer and then this side has a plastic clip which just covers the nut or cover I should say take that one off there's the nut off that side and then we should be able to free our wheel and chain. So what I think I'll do now is um, show you how I remove the battery. I might even um, tip the bike up on its seat to get the wheel off. So we'll, we'll take the battery off next. Uh, we make sure the battery is switched off with the key, which it is in this case. That's on and that's off. So the battery is off and then with the key we place it in the bottom lock and turn it like that now i think one downside to these is you have to move the saddle there and then the handle on this one is broke so if we unlock that the battery then Always take the key out. <laughs> Do remember you've got the key in. I 
I've done that before and bent the key. So there's the battery. So we've now got the battery off. Uh, when putting the battery back on, do remember, slide it down gently. This is a very thin piece of plastic. And if you let it go quickly, it's very easy to break this plastic cover. I've done it. So believe me, it's very easy to break that. The battery is quite heavy in it. It goes with an almost, when you get it in the channel there, it almost goes with a bit of a force. And if it goes too hard, it breaks this very thin little battery plate cover. So I'll now upend the bike and then we'll come back. So now I've got the bike on its saddle and it should be quite easy, he says, <laughs> to um, jiggle the back wheel off and drop the chain. So we'll have a go at doing that. And here we come. And there we go. There's the wheel off. And it's as simple as that, he says. Um, so as you can see, getting the back wheel off one of these uh, rear, rear wheeled motor bikes if I lift it up there we can see the, the sprockets and the motors in the middle of the wheel it's um it's not a too difficult job at all in fact it's no real different to on a conventional bike so I'll get myself sorted out and then we'll come back and take the tar off uh, so the first thing we'll do obviously is take the valve cap off and let the tyre down. Got the key there, we can probably do it with that. Particularly the inner tube isn't particularly that old. Um, so I do, I'm going to try and obviously reuse them. If, if it fails and I damage them, well, so be it. But I have a set of these uh, plastic tyre levers, which comes in a little... I'm, I'm doing this on a roadside bike kit, just as a guide, you know. Um, you could use some spoon... You know, I, years ago I used to use the back ends of the spoons. Um, you know, if you've got some nice serving spoons with big, nice, rounded end, ends, anything like that obviously um, to get in and get a start um, to get the um, tar off there. Right, so we've got the tar completely depleted. I just run the um, Tarib around, and that should pop off relatively easy. And there we come. These tyres come off, as I say, quite easy. We want the tube off as well. We will we really inspect it and see. I think I have a spare tube if I if I need to fit one. So there we go. Um, you can see now the tape and round. Um, I put some bits of extra. Uh, so I've removed the tape um, when, as you can see, where my damaged spoke is, and then it's just a question of unscrewing that head off there, and then slide that one out. There it is, there's the broken spoke. Now the new ones I've got, hopefully, are going to fit okay. So then it's a question of uh, threading our new spoke in and back through and like that and we might have to thread it under that one there and then it comes up to there and then if we put our end piece in and 
tighten that up a little bit to get it started, like so. As our new spoke fitted, it's um, which seems okay. <laughs> so there we go. I've um, now replaced that spoke in the wheel and um, got it tight and. Um, in relation to the other ones I think that's fine like I say we're not doing a wheel build job here this is an old bike it was purely the fact that I wanted a spoke back in that wheel because I don't know it now I've broken one spoke a lot more might break that is possibility with bikes so putting a spoke in it's just for safety reasons I didn't want even going short distances on this bike I didn't want that um, broken spots um, you know wobbling about or moving about or even it's possible it could have fouled the wheel at some point um, if it had broken off even more and stuck out at an angle so it's purely putting I've got it I've got it roughly um, to the tightness that I think the rest are but as for truing a truing a bike wheel is a very skilled art and um, we will have a look at what it looks like when we put it on the bike and um, you know it's possible we could tighten it up a little bit then um, but I'm, I'm quite happy with that we've got the spoke replaced um, we'll certainly put a bit of tape back over that and that bit had come adrift there and we'll make sure there's no sharp edges anywhere so we'll put a little bit more tape over that and then it's a question of putting the wheel, the tube and the wheel back, the tyre back on then. So we'll come back and do that. Uh, so I knew I'd got a, a spoke spanner tool and I've been round. That just hooks in and goes over and then just tightens. And I have been and tightened it. You can roughly gauge what you think. It feels, it feels fine to me now that the replacement one I put in, I've um, taped over a little bit of tape, where well, I peeled the tape back, put a little bit more there because it's peeled off. Um, and so we're ready to put the um, inner tube and the tire back on now. So what I like to do is try and get the tube in the tire there again I'm sure everybody who bikes and does their own uh, time changing or repair has different ways uh, of doing this and I usually try and get the tube roughly in the tire like this work it all the way around it's got a, just a little bit of air in it still Uh, try not to get it bunched up anywhere then obviously line it up where the valve goes through which is there perhaps I've moved it out of camera shot now my apologies if I have it's obviously you can't do several jobs at once here so then pull your valve through like so and then gradually Work your tyre around and onto the rim. It's not easy. It's uh, as I say, it can be it can be tricky. Um, so take your time. Gradually getting one end on. There we go. Slipping on. There we come. That's it, we're slipping on there, we're slipping on there, 
and we're slipping on there and then we're slipped on there right so that is one side on then we want to work the other side back in And then we might need our tire levers again to get under. You can see this, our plastic tire levers, just to get underneath, just to give us that little bit of oomph to get that last bit in. Obviously it's all about stretching it. And it's a particularly cold day today outside, which isn't, I don't think, helping matters. See that tile lever just shot off there. Come with a little bit more in, just gradually working it round a little bit by bit here into the rim. A little bit of time. There we go, a little bit more. We're very nearly there. Sometimes it helps you pull back on the top, and there we go. We're in. And then we'll just inflate the tire a little bit to start with. Just put a little few. Not too much air. Give it a bit of a feel round. That feels okay to me. I normally have these, I think. It gives you a guide on these tyres of, I think it's between 40 and 60 PSI. I can't see on that at the moment, but I will come back to you on that. Yeah, it's 35 to maximum 50. And I normally have them about sort of 40, around about the 40 mark. I find that's, you know, they're nice and hard and the ride is quite good. I don't like them too hard. Um, they tend to, you know, there's a certain amount of sort of, you get a, quite a bit of slip and, and skid I find to have them too hard or likewise too soft. So I think that's going to be fine. We'll take that off. We won't put any more air in that for the moment. Yeah, it feels nicely on the rim. It's all round to the, to the mark there. So bear in mind this tire has been on some time. Looking at the silver uh, reflected mark, it looks pretty good there. So I'm, I'm more than happy with that. And we'll now bring the bike back in and before we inflate the tar fully, we will put the back wheel back on the bike. Up. It's a question now of pulling the chain back, getting the cable through as well. We've got to think about the cable on this bike, obviously. Well, after quite a bit of jiggling, um, and I'm sorry I was getting in the way, um, it's not particularly easy, um, you know, my back was to the camera, but we have the wheel back on, I'm not going to say we're quite, um, there's a couple of uh, locating washers that have to sort of drop down, and we're perhaps not quite in the right location but I'll have another fiddle it's just a question of jiggling it's just a question of patience really and jiggling it about uh, to get that right down into where you want it uh, read the nuts again on this one you've got to be a little bit careful the washer wants passing over and um, that one's passing over and then it comes through and I can see that 
I might put a little bit of tape on it. My cable is beginning to split there. I think that's just just with the age of the bike. Um, that that springy bit should come right up to there. We'll try and perhaps get that over. And it's just a question of threading the, the nut on. We can slightly jiggle this. Um, and then we can probably push that down a bit. And then that will come through there. And then obviously back into our socket in time, which is up there. If you can, if you can see that socket there, that, that will come plugged back into our socket there. We'll perhaps give that a bit of a clean, it's a bit dirty. So we'll go around the other side and put the um, nut on that. This this side also has a plastic, uh, sorry, the other side has a plastic cover nut on it. And then um, I've got the nut over here, ready. Just a question of doing the self same thing. And then we'll just see what the wheel looks like. It's not too bad actually. It does move a little bit, but for true, for true the wheel for there again for an oldish bike, it doesn't. It... So we've got the um, wheel back on, and as I say, it runs it runs quite true really. Um, I'm quite happy with that. So we'll um now put the bike the right way up, blow the tar up, and come back. So there we go. I've got the uh, tar pumped back uh, nice and hard. The battery's back on up there. The seat's the right way, and I'm really quite happy with that. Um, like I say, I've checked the spokes, and the rest of them seem fine at the moment. And it's something I shall watch out on this. Um, at least putting that replacement spoke in and getting it roughly, you know, um, as tight as the rest. It's not going to, um, you know, obviously there's a potential there that that spoke could have broke off and got caught in the gears or even thrown me off the bike. Um, there's always silly things like that often do happen. So that shouldn't happen now and it's, the wheel is back to how it was and I'm quite happy with that as I say so so you see it's not a big job really take the, the wheel off one of these bikes or put a new tyre that's what probably most people would do um, if you have a puncture and want to change an inner, inner tube it's not a big job have a go you know it's relatively easy um, if I can do it I, I'm no bike mechanic by any ways but I try and try and do it because you learn about the bike you ride I think by doing things yourself and I'm sure everybody has different ways or different views on these things but this is an old bike which I just use for local very local trips now and it's uh, it's it's still got many miles in it I hope so um, I'm going to put the panniers back on and call it a day for today and um, as I say, hopefully, um, I should take the next thing I should do, I should take it out on a test run. The gears might need adjusting, having had the, the wheel and the chain off, but we can do that um, whenever. So, yeah, thanks for watching. Do subscribe. If you've got any questions about Volt bikes, you know, I'll try and answer them. Or, if you know, as I say, if you want to have a look at my other videos on Volt bikes, please do. And thanks for watching. Do subscribe and come back soon. Bye.